What's up guys and welcome to the HVAC Dope Show. Today's video is probably going to be the dopest video we have ever made, but before we get started, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already, so we can keep bringing you daily and weekly content to make your life and your home more comfortable. So let me get this straight, Howard. All HVAC brands are the same? Then why do they have different brands? And why do some of these brands have good reviews online and some have bad reviews? In this video, I'm going to answer all of these questions and more, so stay tuned while we break it down. And I'll start by taking you back to a moment when I was a wee lad in HVAC and I was at a parts counter buying a furnace for one of my first installs and I asked the guy behind the counter, is this a good brand? And he said, well, here's the deal. Your blower motor, pressure switch, flame sensors, gas valves, high limit switches, flame rollout switches, PC boards, inducer motors, and capacitors are all made by companies like Fasco, White Rogers, Robert Shaw, General Electric, Gentech, Sapco, and Honeywell, to name a few. And when it comes to air conditioners, every single 13-seer and 16-seer single system on the market uses a Copeland scroll compressor. And after he said that, I looked at every furnace and AC that I serviced after that and started to notice how what he was saying was right. And this is just one of the points I'm going to touch on in this video. And although the title is why all HVAC brands are the same, a better statement could be why all HVAC brands are more similar than you might think. That being said, I'll give you the skinny and further break it down for you. Now, on the standard basic efficiency systems, and this is single stage furnaces, single stage 13 sear, 16 sear uh, air conditioners, for example, they are all very similar in terms of the components that make up the individual units. So essentially all brands are quote unquote the same, but they have their differences because not all brands are created equal. And what I mean by that is just because a brand comes out and can slap together a furnace or AC and put a logo on it and call it their own brand, that doesn't mean they're going to be around in five years or 10 years to warranty it when a part goes bad and it comes time for them to honor the warranty. Now that's not to say that all components of the systems are the same because each manufacturer tends to have their own design of heat exchanger, for example. Uh, and when it comes to high efficiency equipment like the Daikin Fit or VRV Life, most manufacturers have some level of their own proprietary technology, but a lot of that technology is still private labeled in some factories that manufacture compressors uh, for multiple brands or motors for multiple brands. For example, Gentech Motors makes every single variable speed uh, motor on the market. So the most important thing to consider when choosing a brand that is what is the warranty and whether or not that brand will be around in 10 years when you need to get a part for that equipment. And a perfect example of this is furnaces manufactured by a company called ICP or International Comfort Products. If you want an OEM part for this manufacturer, good luck. And this manufacturer is actually just a private label of carrier. But Carrier offers zero support for ICP products, and it's getting increasingly harder to source these parts. However, if you were to buy a Carrier branded furnace, you could still get parts for basically every piece of equipment Carrier has manufactured in the last 40 years. And this is why the brand we prefer to sell is Daikin, because not only is Daikin a brand that's been around for almost 100 years since it was founded in the 1920s, they also have the best warranty in the industry, and that is a 12-year parts and label warranty, and their DOA warranty on 16 series and up is either six or 12 years, meaning they are so confident in their products that if their compressor fails or heat exchanger fails and there's those first few years prematurely, they won't just give you a new heat exchanger, they will give you an entirely new system. And they are the only manufacturer to offer this kind of guarantee. For example, when I first started, I sold Bryant, uh, which is a line of carrier, and I had a system that had a premature compressor failure outside the 30-day DOA guarantee window. And even though it had only been installed six months earlier, instead of giving me a whole new condenser, they only gave me a, a compressor. 
the good news is, is they were still there to honor the warranty on that equipment. But if that was a Daikin condenser, I would have been able to put in a brand new unit and sent the old condenser to Daikin and they would an analyze why it failed prematurely. Now you are probably saying to yourself, okay, that makes sense and sounds reasonable. After all, everything is made all over the world, AKA China now anyways. So it's not that far fetched to think that all manufacturers get some of their components from similar factories and then piecemeal them together in their own factory, put a logo on it and call it a day. But if that's the case, Howard, why do some brands have a good reputation online and some brands have a bad reputation? And the answer can be summed up generally as two causes. Number one, Every manufacturer is bound to make mistakes at some point. For example, even a reliable company like Carrier had a lawsuit in 2004 on a series of heat exchangers that was chalked up ultimately to a poor heat exchanger design. And the number two reason for this, and the most common reason, is installation error. And a perfect example of this is a company like Goodman. If you go through the forums and peruse the internet, you might see negative information regarding Goodman. But when you dig a little deeper, what you realize is that that is because you can buy a Goodman furnace off of the internet and your uncle can install it for you because he saw it on the YouTubes and it don't look that hard. Now, in recent years, they have tightened down on this and it's harder. For, uh, they don't sell to the public as much, but when it comes to HVAC installation, it is not as easy as it looks. For example, here are some of the things to consider when sizing a system properly for your home. What is the R factor of the insulation of your attic? How big is your ductwork? What is the heat load calculation? How many supply runs do you have? How many return runs do you have? How big is your return ductwork? What is the CFM capacity of your ductwork? And is the system that you're house needs also able to work with your existing ductwork and infrastructure. And I'm not trying to be snarky, but in all seriousness, in seriousness, after working in HVAC one year, I thought I knew it all. And now after having worked in HVAC eight years, I feel like I know nothing because there's so much that goes into the trade. So the most common reason for a brand to have a bad reputation is oftentimes because they were installed incorrectly, which is why it's important to vet your installers more than your brand. Most brands are reliable if it's a name brand that you've heard of, like American Standard or Lennox or Carrier or Daikin. But even these companies have had recalls and random issues that come up, which is why you want a brand that stands behind their product and has been in business for a while and has a network of dealers to support the equipment. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel and smash that like button because we are going to be putting out another video where we do a head-to-head -head mashup of different brands breaking down their warranties and all the fine print. So in a nutshell, that is why all HVAC brands are all the same, but they clearly are not equal. Thank you for tuning in to the HVAC Dope Show. I'm your host, Howard Binder, signing off.